been making all kinds of videos about um, a certain topic, and I'm kind of getting tired of that right now. Uh, so I thought I'd just kind of go over some of the stuff that I uh, do for my eBay store here. Uh, right now I'm taking photos. It's uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning, got up really early, and I was laying there. I thought I might as well get up and get some work done. And uh, I'm at the house, so I don't have to get up, get my car, drive to the shop. I can just uh, walk right over here, turn my studio lights on, and uh, start doing photos. It's one of the most time-consuming things uh, if you have a lot of items. And uh, it's something you can just do at home. And um, this is the thing I do most. Uh, that's why our store is called Hats Around the World. Uh, we do mostly hats. I started off with an antique store. Uh, actually, well, no, let's see. I started off when I was a kid going to garage sales. And uh, I just liked garage sales. I liked finding little interesting stuff. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've done this and uh, tried to talk on the camera, so see how well this goes and we'll see how annoying the uh, the camera is hopefully more annoying than me anyway I started going to garage sales when I was a little kid I just kept kind of doing that and then I got into baseball cards when I was in sixth grade I uh, started doing that started going to card shows with a, a friend of mine uh, we were like the youngest kids at the card show, had all of our cases and everything, and just kind of got into buying and selling and learned that I could, you know, get something cheap, hold on to it for a while, and, and sell it for more later, you know, just kind of like patience. You know, it's a basic, a basic rule to buying and selling, um, unless you're uh, doing stuff with a real fast turnover, day trading or something, I don't know what. Uh, most of the stuff you just have to hold on to and have it when somebody is uh, looking for it. Uh, a lot of times, well, I'm getting way too into this. So anyway, <laughs> back up. Kept uh, kept on with the baseball cards for a while, and then um, I never got rid of those, but I just quit doing it. It uh, and then. Uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, it just really got, market got flooded. There's too many brands, too many cards, all that stuff. And just, you know, you change hobbies, whatever. I just quit doing that, and then I, I went through um, some professional jobs, a few of them, and ended up doing this, really. I ended up, uh, I got out of the Air Force. Actually, I was doing this while I was still in, uh, but I started uh, doing some storage units, buying storage units. Uh, there was a, a storage facility in Central California called Daryl's Mini Storage where they wouldn't sell the entire unit. They'd have a crew of people in an auctioneer with a trailer, and they would uh, go to each unit, pop it open, and the whole crew would pull all the boxes, all of the, all of the items out of the storage unit, and you could bid on them individually uh, starting at like five bucks. You see, you know, like old sewing machine over there. Who wants to start bidding on this? Five dollars, all right, five, ten, whatever. And that's, that's how they do that. I spent a lot of days at that Daryl's Mini Storage uh, picking out different individual items. And uh, that was pretty fun. So, but I do the entire storage units too. Sometimes I buy two, three in a day. Um, garage sales go to auctions. All kinds of different auctions. There's uh, industrial auctions, medical auctions. There's just surplus auctions that uh, people take their everyday household goods to. Um, those seem to usually be the most fun. Never know what you're gonna find there. And then uh, estate sales. Uh, Statesales.net. There's plenty of estate sales. So on there and get a little app to show you where they're all at and just cruise around to those. Those are pretty cool. People at the estate sales really know what they're doing though. They know what basically everything is worth and you, it's going to be really tough to hit any kind of home runs at estate sales. Um, you can do it though. You just have to know a lot. 
Well, you're not going to find any blatantly obvious items that are worth a lot of money. It's got to be something kind of obscure, probably that one of those folks missed, because the most people have been doing that are doing estate sales have been doing this for their, their entire life, and they really know what's up. So I kept doing that, and um, eventually all the, uh, I was doing that out of my house, and doing Craigslist and stuff like that, and I'd buy, uh, oh, at the Daryl's auction, I would buy couches sometimes, I had an enclosed trailer, and uh, there would be couches in these storage units, they'd pull everything out, and a lot of the people that were there, they'd, uh, at the end of the day, you know, they'd start running out of money, start running out of space, and there'd be like a uh, brand new couch that made, might have been worth, you know, 1200 bucks, 1500 bucks. There's nobody to want. I get for five dollars. Put it on Craigslist on my phone, or have put them, put two or three of them on Craigslist on my phone. So by the time I got home, I'd have some people waiting in my house. I'd sell them right out of my uh, trailer before I even took them into the house. Do stuff like that. So eventually, I opened up a place called Relic Rescue. It's a 6,000 warehouse, uh, 6,000 square foot warehouse in Clovis, California. It's a 4,000 square feet of actual like warehouse space in the back, and then a 2,000 square foot um, showroom. It used to be a, a place called Filgus Carpet. Um, after I left, it became a, like a big detail shop, auto detailing shop, car stereo stuff like that. Uh, but we had that place for uh, a little over a year, and um, it was just too much. It was too big. I needed some people. I needed to close off the gate in the back, and it just wasn't, um, well, and then there was a bunch of street theater happening in my life. Oh, uh, I'm not talking about that. Anyway, there was stuff going on that uh, made, it, made it tough to run that. Ended up having, oh, and then we uh, we also... At the end of that, decided we were leaving California. We were going to move to Oklahoma and do this. I thought I'd be able to go on go to some farms, and auctions, and estate sales, and stuff like that out there, and have a better shot at doing what I'm doing. Um, so we had an auction, and the entire 6,000 square foot store, everything in the store was auctioned off in one day. It took like 12 hours. She had a huge auction. We got rid of all that stuff. Moved to Oklahoma and did this. Um, out of the house and we also opened up an art studio in Oklahoma, in Norman, Oklahoma, where we had from like five to nine resident artists at any given time. There were rooms up there that we rented out at uh, 420 Main in Norman, rented some of those rooms out and did art walk every week or every uh, month. And, uh, had advanced, had a, had a concert out there one time, had a metal band play. Um, that was just like the side, side thing, we just doing, uh, doing eBay nonstop. I was going through a lot of clothes. Um, all kinds of random stuff. We'd always have just, just piles of random stuff all over the place. And uh, I realized that we just kind of needed to get it narrowed down, you know. It's tough unless you have a giant warehouse, you own some property, you've got a big, sh you know, sh metal shop uh, that is temperature controlled, so a lot of your stuff doesn't get ruined. You know, it's tough to uh, it's tough to do this. That definitely helps. Uh, so if you have a smaller space, you kind of have to limit yourself to a couple categories, maybe of some smaller items that uh, you know just won't take up so much space. Like, right now, we currently have around 13,000 items in our store. I just deleted, like, 1,500 of them, I think. That, uh, some art and uh, just some of the knickknack stuff that was sitting around taking up room that hadn't sold in a long time. Got rid of that stuff. Art and, well, clothes. I had clothes out there in the garage, and there were, like, three racks of clothes, so about, I don't know, 1,000 clothing garments. I donated all that stuff. I have the art in the back of my truck right now. So. Anyway... Uh, eventually narrowed this down to hats and uh, glasses. I have some prescription glasses, old school glasses people 
Just take them to lens crafters, get their own lenses put in there or whatever. And that is basically all I'm doing now. So I found sources where I can buy hats in quantity from different people. Uh, I'd bought some stuff off of eBay before, some lots and stuff like that. And they told me they can continue to get me hats. So a couple different people that can ship stuff to me. And I'll buy lots on eBay of multiple hats. And then I go... I go everywhere, all the places I, I, I said earlier. Swap meets, auctions, garage sales, uh, state sales, thrift stores, uh, even trash pickup. Not so much trash pickup anymore, but uh, just everywhere. And look for that one certain thing that you can kind of get dialed in. Like if you like photography, you like to do photos, go to all of those and ask, do you have photos? Because half the time people don't think to put their old photos out that they care less about that, um, you know, we're gonna get thrown away eventually. Anyway, if you're a, a photo historian uh, slash seller, you might be saving a piece of history that's gonna get thrown away later just by saying, hey, do you guys have any photos? I ask for stuff all the time. Hey, do you have any hats? And um, a lot of times people never even thought to put those out. And they're just like, yeah, I got a box of them in the, in the closet in here. I got like a hundred of them in there. And, you know, you go, okay, well, how much you want for all of them? I'll give you 50 bucks, I'll give you a hundred bucks, whatever. Make a deal with them and there you go. Wasn't something they, even, they never even thought of. Was nothing they had thought of. It's early. <laughs> Rained for the first time in uh, West Phoenix in months. I think it's been like four months. But we do live in the middle of the desert, so that's you know, nothing crazy. Uh, so where did I leave off? It's, uh, it's in Oklahoma doing this full-time, buying, selling, running the art studio. The art studio seemed to be just sucking up time and money, though. It was fun, but um, it's a whole other story. Uh, okay, that part of Oklahoma wasn't for me. It might have been the uh, just a group of people I was around. Or the situation that I was in that uh, caused me to not enjoy myself there, but I, one day uh, I just had to get the hell out of there. And this area was warm. I had looked at it before, before we moved to Oklahoma, and uh, I just thought I'm going to Phoenix. So ended up out here in Avondale, Arizona. And um, on uh, its home base. We rented a giant house out here because the economy had crapped and uh, a lot of the houses weren't worth very much out here. They'd really dropped, so we rented a big house to, so we could both live in it and store all this uh, eBay stuff. But now that I've narrowed a lot of this stuff down, we don't need, we need so much space. We don't really need this big of a house. 12,000 hats take up a decent amount of space, but uh, you can get those in a couple of bedrooms in a house. Uh, full size, or, yeah, full size garage, like a two car garage if you have it insulated. Um, especially here in the desert, you have these things out there in the summer, a couple summers, everything will be gone. It'll just turn into dust. Not with some items, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect them. Photos, definitely. <laughs> But yeah, there are thousands of different categories of things that you can go look for. I mean, people people do it all. When they tell people I'm looking for hats, they're like, wait, what? They're like, hats, hats? What do you mean? Yeah, baseball hats, just old hats. You got any old hats? 
and it still takes him a couple times sometimes like you <laughs> wait you're looking for dirty old hats like this one right here is pretty not the greatest condition you know there's some wear in it there's some uh it's faded one of the buttons is missing from the or one of the snaps missing from the snapback and the bill is uh is less than desirable <laughs> but it's how uh, the los angeles police department um, from like the probably the 80s, I'm guessing this one's like maybe late 70s, but, but most likely 80s, early 80s. Uh, and somebody might not have seen that hat since then. <laughs> might be their old hat. Might be, uh, you know, part of the collection they've been looking for. And they don't mind if it's dirty because they can clean it up a little bit. But this one, I sh probably should wipe this one down, but I'm, uh, I have a lint roller, so I just uh, lint roll most of this stuff. Because um, I can't take too much time on each one. You know, we're trying to list as many as possible. We usually get like, ugh, I'd say average like 50 a day done uh, between the two of us. It's tough to get 50 done a day by yourself doing the photos and uh, listing. That's the, those are long days. So, um, let's see if I can walk through a day, my day, of what all this entails. If you think you want to start an eBay store, and this is my particular eBay store, this is exactly what I do. I mean, you can try to copy exactly what I do if you want. Um, it's, you, you, you have, you're gonna, if you do something like this, you have to commit all of your time to it. This takes up all of my time. There's no way I can do this by myself. I need an extra person with this many items. Uh, we shipped out, two months ago, we shipped out 700. This month has actually been slower, but we, there's, you know, it's not, uh, my, my son took a vacation. Um, I slowed down a little bit. I've been having some other uh, issues going on in my life, it's kind of time consuming. So I haven't been able to completely focus on, on this, put all my time into this. So it's kind of, I don't like those videos you watch online, yeah. Guys making food really fast, flipping like uh, little flawful things across the way. Kind of get repetitious, kind of get like that. Feel like that guy sometimes doing this. After I get to like, you know, half 50, I've done the same thing over and over. I kind of almost start to zone out, not even see what hat I listed, or I mean, what hat I uh, took a photo of. I'll go to put them away, or somebody else list them, go to put them away. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't remember this hat, you know, even though I'm the one that took a photo of it. NAS Corpus Christi, Texas, Naval Air Station. So that's a vintage Navy, Navy hat. The Navy, they used to get to wear a bunch of these uh, shop hats like this. Um, the Air Force did too. I don't think they really did that too much in the Marines, in the Army, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, so back to me, my walking through my normal day. I go off on lots of tangents when I'm doing this. One, because I'm working and I get distracted. Two, that's just how uh, how I function. Anyway, say I wake up at 3.30 in the morning. I would come out here and I'd do photos. I'd try to get at least 50, uh, 50 hats done, photos. Then I'd go to the computer and check all of the messages, which consist of offers, to check the offer and see if I want to accept it. If I have um, buy it now with make an offer option, Let's check all those. Check all the messages. People have questions about uh, size of the hat or 
um, condition or just some, uh, sometimes you just have weird random questions that don't make any sense and you just have to figure out how to navigate through that and deal with it. And, uh, a lot of times it's just about the size or the, the color or I don't know. So answer those. Um, sometimes we'll have somebody wanting a return. There's been a lot lately, but it, um, it's an extenuating circumstance. I don't, it's not really a normal thing. Um, so you have to deal with your returns and decide if you want to, you know, go back and forth with the person and tell them, no, I sent you the right thing. This is, you know, we did everything correctly. Or if you just don't want to deal with it and, and uh, send them their money back, it's... It's kind of a tough situation sometimes because, you know, you want to do the best thing for the customer. You want them to be happy, but at the same time, you don't want to be taken advantage of and just be giving away free merchandise because they said, oh, well, this one has a piece of lint on it. You know, I, I literally had a girl return a pair of glasses because I didn't wipe off the lenses before I shipped them to her. And uh, I say no returns on my stuff, but <laughs> that one was kind of, so. She said they were crappy quality too, which I, I didn't make them. I bought them and resold them. So, but you know, some of those you just go ahead and return their money. It's going to take you less time and effort to, to do that and maybe block that person because they're not going to be a good buyer. Uh, what else do I check in the messages? Uh, eBay will send updates, you know, what's going on. Stuff like that. Um, go through, check all the messages, accept all the offers. Once I accept all the offers, I go to the awaiting shipment. Or actually, I will go to awaiting payment, make sure that all the invoices have been sent to everybody uh, that won either auctions or, you know, just haven't paid. Sometimes people will buy something and then not pay. Or they'll buy multiple items and they're waiting for you to reduce shipping or combine shipping for them, which is usually not a big deal. You do that, no problem. They're going to buy multiple items from you. Um, so send the invoices, go to awaiting shipping, and then I will go up, and this is going to depend uh, differently on how you do this with what kind of product you have, but... I just start searching for my hats. I've got everything color coded. Uh, yeah, it's all set up by color. Like I'm, like I'm listing these, or I'm doing photos right now. They're all the navy blue truckers. So all the navy blue truckers are together. All of the navy blue snapbacks are together. All the navy blue strapbacks. All of the navy blue. Uh, you have to call it hook and latch. Velcro won't let you use their uh, word because uh, patented or copyright. I don't know, but uh, don't use the word Velcro on eBay. They'll shut your store down for a week. Uh, anyway, so we have those uh, all organized by color and by type and then by genre. Like I'll have them all. Uh, baseball, football, other sports, college, golf, uh, destination, auto, auto parts. You know, depending on you know what type of hat I have, it seems like they mix more of certain types of hats in certain colors and uh styles you know like there's more seems to be more outdoor hats and uh, beige and green of the strapbacks and then there seems to be more um, trucking companies that have old trucker hats you know go figure stuff like that so you just kind of get to know which ones are which make categories it's going to be the same with anything just you're just going to kind of figure it out as you go make different categories organize all your stuff really well so you can find it quick and uh and then get all that stuff found. Kind of just gathering, you know, getting all your stuff in a pile, ready to be shipped. And then uh, once you get all that, oh, I need to move my camera. I made it the next row. Once you get all that stuff shipped. I'm sorry, once you get all the stuff found, uh, well, I take it downstairs and just get started on that i take breaks between all this this takes all day but uh so start start
start with shipping, and I've got all of my boxes, all of my materials, everything all in one spot, um, so I'm not running all over the place. It's a small room, and I have to step, you know, like, across to get some of my stuff, but I try to make it as simple as possible. Ship everything out, a sealed bag in a box, uh, so it doesn't get ruined, you know, if it happens to get wet or something in the mail, it rains and they can't protect it. They usually do. I usually have no problem with USPS. They do a great job. Um, but just in case something's going overseas and whatever, you want to put something, put whatever you're shipping in a plastic bag, they're like a couple cents. And then I put my hats in a box so they're not crushed. I uh, have a laser printer roll that automatically prints out the label so I'm not writing or taping or anything like that. Just print it right off on the roll. And... Uh, Get them all stacked up in the in the bags. We'll drop them off. Repeat. So search for items. Network uh, with people that can ship things to you. Find uh, your watering holes, like your fishing holes. Don't tell everybody where they're at. Like this is, you know, I'm telling a lot of information about how I do things and. Uh, and places I shop and stuff like that. I know that. I've been doing this long enough. Um, you know, that's not always the greatest thing. But I'm to the point right now where I just need to do some informational videos to pass some of this uh, info along. So some other young entrepreneurs that uh, don't want to sit in a cubicle. I mean, I don't... Oh, come on, I'm going to stop myself right there. Say if you don't want to sit in a cubicle and be a slave. Okay. If you own your own business, you're going to be a slave to yourself. So it's just kind of deciding who you're going to be slaving for. <laughs> Somebody else or yourself. Um, I don't know. I chose myself eventually. Did a lot of, did a lot of stuff. Military. Uh, owned an insurance agency. Wore the tie. Did the whole thing. Had bosses. Oh, this and that. And I just kind of ended up with this, where I'm my own boss. But, if you're going to do this, you better be good at being self-motivational. Better have some passion for what you do, or at least know that what you could be doing is going to suck way worse than this. You know. And you could just drop your phone all the time like me too. All right. This is, uh, this is Bob. It's from Vegas. It's getting kind of worn out, but uh, I keep unscrewing this thing on the bottom. I think it's all floppy down here, and then I'll just stuff a bunch of newspaper, stuff like that in there, make it firm again. But um, we've, God, who knows how many hats we've sold. How many items? Uh, actually, I looked at it the other day. I think I've sold 15,000 items on eBay since I opened this eBay store. Uh, feedback just hit over 8,000 uh, this, this month, this last month, in this particular store, and I had a couple other stores that when I first started I was kind of dabbling in this stuff like that and there was a small amount of feedback on those but they were larger items so this this is definitely um, something that put a lot of work and effort into a lot of time and effort I mean um, whatever you want to call it a uh, lot of learning a lot of failing a lot of researching a um, lot of stuff in between But it turns into a business eventually, you know. You get things dialed in. You can, you know, hire employees. You can run this just like a regular, regular. It is a regular business. It's just, uh, you know, you have to have the imagination to go out and really look and search, have a good eye, and talk to people, and be. You know, you have to be active in this. You can't play off this. You got to do it. You got to be in it. Can't be afraid of uh, going out different places where uh, might be kind of sketchy. 
you know, if you're like used to going to the mall and seeing everybody dressed uh, like people dress at the mall and everything all pristine and uh, shiny, probably don't want to do this. Not for you. Uh, if you don't mind getting dirty and uh, meeting some really interesting characters and going on some crazy adventures, you should probably do this. I know I'm sitting here taking a picture of a hat right now, and you're like, oh wow, that looks like a really crazy adventure, but you know, you have to go find this stuff. And I used to go on workcations. We would just go, uh, my ex-wife and I would go out, take a certain amount of money, find a destination, go to that place, and then find all the spots around that area and go look for what we were looking for. Because a lot of times people in that area might not have been looking for the same thing that we were, you know. That wasn't selling in that area. We'd go find everything we could, fill up the whatever vehicle we had, and come back. I call it the triage process. We go through everything and figure out, you know, what's going to go where what we're going to do with it, how much it's going to be, all that stuff, get everything listed, uh, get the initial stuff shipped out, and then uh, go back and do it again. You know, I do that, I do that same thing, but I do it around here, around where I live in the desert. Uh, but I, I don't have to go too much anymore just because I have, I found some resources. I've got my guys. But, uh, who knows, man, that could, that could end any day. So you'll just have to, you can't just keep relying on the same thing over and over if this one has a really busted belt. So that one's a little bit dirty, so I think I might set that aside and get a washcloth, washcloth, and then wipe that one off. Um, I feel like I'm missing all kinds of stuff. I uh, just wanted to talk about kind of what I do, how many hours I put in. <laughs> uh, you can do this too. Uh, you, ha you have to love it though. You can't, you can't, uh, you, here, here's what, here's, in order to do this, here's what you need. You need to be able to get excited about finding something uh, to keep you going. Um, unless you're okay with the, you know, the monotony. You, you can handle monotony. And you just know what to do. You know, all the steps. But it does get monotonous. Uh, but you have to, when you go look for stuff, it's, uh, you know, it makes it kind of fun. It makes it like a treasure hunt. You never know what you're going to find. Never know what conversation you're going to get into. Never know what kind of person you're going to meet. And it's not, it's not always all positive. You got to definitely uh, drudge through the, uh, the muck and mire out there sometimes to find the gems. And I mean that figuratively and literally. You know, like anything you do, there's good, bad, and the ugly. And uh, that's with people and items you're looking for. You will experience all of it. And then uh, you get better as you go at kind of being undercover, incognito. Um, you know, people ask you all kinds of questions about what you're buying. And uh, I used to not want to say anything about it. It was super competitive. You know, people are competitive. People are looking for jobs. Um, but it was ridiculously competitive, and I didn't want to say anything to anybody about what I was doing because I didn't want anybody, you know, I was like, oh, God, this is, this is my thing, finally. Uh, but everything's on the internet now. Everything, all of this, there's, there's probably 100 videos like I'm making right now. Uh, or similar, you know. Well, I'm annoyed by having to uh, do photos while I'm doing this. Maybe you all are too. We'll see how it works out because I make a lot of noise. And I know that like when I watch podcasts, I'm eating some food. 
distracted. They're not just, you know, they don't have their focus on the camera or the other person. It's kind of annoying. It feels like they're not fully invested in uh, what they're talking about. And I probably don't sound like I am right now because I'm all over the place and I'm talking really low. And it's pretty early still. Okay. Still working on my coffee, kind of quiet. But yeah, hearing this camera go off nonstop. I don't know, unless you, uh, some people might like it. Who knows? A lot of people will complain about, uh, they live, we live by the airport out here. A lot of people complain about airplane noise. I'm like, uh, well, I like it. I used to work at an airport. I lived at an airport half the time. I love airplanes. I like hearing them fly over. Some people hate it. They complain about it. And I'm like, hey, um, you know the airport was here before you bought your house, right? I mean, just... I'm saying. Well, they changed the flight path. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. They changed flight paths. Winds change. And from different directions. And a lot of things happen. To where they have to land differently, left or right. That's how they, that's how they uh, label the airport runways left and right. So it's on a. This is totally has nothing to do with hats. But since I'm just talking about random shit, um, here we go. So uh, on an airport, the runways are. Uh, signified by R and L. So they're on a 360 degree grid, or not a grid, but 360 degree circle basically. So if you just set that circle down, um, whatever degree the end of the runway at, either side, like uh, the one I worked at was uh, 2 9 right and 11, like, yeah, 11 left and 2 9 right. So it'd be 11 degrees that way, and the opposite would be uh, 29 degrees. So you got 11 left and 2 9 right. Uh, and then the opposite one. So, yeah. Whew, it's been a little while. Anyway, that's how it goes. You have yeah, your opposite ends of the, uh, the circle. Yeah, 2 9 and 11. I almost confused myself right there. It's not hard to do. Yeah, so they have on this side, they have 11 left and right, and the other side would be 2 9 left and right. Or whatever direction your, your airport is, uh, and you'll see it on the, uh, on the runway if you go to take off. You'll see it right there on the, uh, on the runway, or if you're on the taxiway, you can look at it. A lot of times you'll just see it, see it. You know, a number and an L or a number and an R. A lot of people don't know what that is, but that just signifies what degree on the circle you're taking off. Um, what else do I have to say about either? Um, if you have a problem with harassment, uh, if your store is doing well, if you've got a lot of items and there's a competitor that um, is willing to gang stalk you or, you know, do some kind of uh, multiple person harassment on your store, you have to you have to kind of start keeping an eye out for these people that they'll try to consume your time and ask you weird questions and just like um, ask for returns for nonsense kind of things. So you have to start blocking these people and depending on how many you got. Um, you have to block quite a few people. It might be impossible to block all of them, but uh, when you're having an issue with a malicious communication, you need to block those people before they make a purchase and they have, uh, you know, when they start asking like really weird questions or start doing um, just odd stuff, asking you to send stuff as a gift overseas instead of um, don't do that. People ask you to send a gift overseas, 
All right, they'll, they'll purchase something on eBay and they'll say, well, you send this overseas as a gift. I don't want to pay customs. And they won't say, I don't want to pay customs, but that's what's going on. And it's not your option. I'm doing it as a felony, actually, I believe. Not I believe, I called eBay and asked him because uh, guy, <laughs> some guy cussed me up and down, called me a cunt. And uh, told me I was an hour. Oh, dude, and then it was all. I should, I should look that up and read it. It was great. It was probably one of the best ones I've had. But uh, all because I wouldn't ship this item as a gift and it, uh, to a friend. You know, I said, well, I can't do that. It's a felony. And he said, well, what are you going to be a little sissy boy and obey all the rules? You know, something like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't want to get my store shut down. Um, and I don't want to go to jail for, uh, for that. So, well, I don't want to go to jail for <laughs> anything. Um, so the guy got really pissed off and, and whatever, but uh, that's, that's one thing I'll ask you to do. Yeah, so anyway, just block these people. Um, there's millions and millions of people on eBay, so if you have 100 people blocked eventually, I think I'd probably do, I don't know, or maybe even more. Uh, you know, just, it's just getting rid of that uh, that group of people that are, you know, not there to uh, patronize your store. They're there to loiter and shoplift and cause disturbances just online, you know. It's like a bunch of, uh, I don't know, like you go into a store that's near a high school, after school, and they got some like some store employee standing there, uh, and they'll only let the kids in with the backpack like one at a time. I know it sucks, but that's I see this all the, all over the place. That's it seems like that's almost how you have to be <laughs> with your store, you know, just block them. Uh, but the majority of people on there are okay. You know, people are really happy to get the thing that they're looking for because if you're doing something on eBay, oh, and here's another. Man, you're gonna to listen to 40 minutes to get a couple little, couple little bits of information here. Damn it! I almost oh. forgot what I was gonna say now. Uh, I'll think about it. Should go to sell on eBay. There's multiple reasons why that can happen. <laughs> Old age, cannabis, electronic harassment. Who knows? Who knows? What? Is this supposed to be a eBay video? This is getting weird. Don't I? Start recording yourself, you start realizing uh, I'm getting old too. Got some wrinkles in my face. I've taken so many pictures in my life. I've been a photographer for a long time. I was a photographer for the Air Force for 10 years, did my own photos for the whole time. The bands, models, skateboarders, all kinds of stuff. And just I've taken pictures of oh, probably 30,000 hats times what? How many pictures? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, seven to eight photos each hat, 30,000 hats. So when I close my eye like that, I get this wrinkle in my face, and that's. Mm, don't have it on that side. No, a couple. But yeah. So from taking so many photos, getting a wrinkle in my face. You can't have resting bitch face while you do this, as the, uh, the ladies say.
Yeah, some chicks couldn't tell what they're always listening. Just straight paste. Some of them because they just have no soul. Uh, some of them because they're just trying not to get wrinkles. <laughs> it makes it hard to tell. I think I need to plug this phone in. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you're gonna do eBay, you better have a good memory. You need a good camera. You don't need a $2,000 camera or anything. It's, you want good photos. Your photos are very important. Um, if you've got a dark, yeah, see, this is stuff I just take for granted because I've been doing this forever. It's hard to think of when you're, uh, talking about it. If you have a dark, shadowy um, photo from a weird angle uh, that doesn't show all of the item, basically what you want to do is be able to, if there was no description, if you could not put a description at all. Yeah, usually don't do youth hats, people, I don't know, when they weren't selling, and it doesn't seem to be like people seem to spend money on their kids, or they don't want their kid to wear a youth hat or something like that, but I put a couple of them on there for like a really cool baseball hat or something. Um, oh god, I'm gonna need to go back to bed. Yeah, that's what I do pretty much, uh, well, not all day. Good, I did 240 of these in one day once. It was a long day. Um, taxes, definitely a big thing with eBay, you know. Some people that do this buy sell thing are like, cash is king, I only do cash. Um, not report anything, old school way. And I'm, as much as I don't like paying taxes, I know I need to. Um, you know, got uh, 2015's paid. Uh, still waiting to pay 2016. Having issues with tax guy. You know, 2017 texts are coming up too, so I got a little behind, and that's a whole nother story. It's not, uh, had that money, and I think, yeah, I'm not married anymore, and that money's gone. Ah, so we'll just go ahead and leave that there. But if, you, if you're going to do this, just go ahead and make sure that you put money away each month as part of your budget for your taxes, because it's going to catch up with you. And, you know, it would be nice to have that money right away, but then you got to give it back later. And uh, you get yourself stuck in a shitty situation after you've done, you know, so much work. And then it might be impossible to catch up and be able to get out of that hole. Especially depending on the situation you're in if you're... Uh, definitely want to start out with that. Make sure that you start putting away taxes. Or if you're uh, working with someone, say that they're putting in taxes that it's actually going in there. Make sure you see, see the numbers. How many times is this camera going to fall down? This is a horrible video. You should all hate me by now. So somebody was telling me that uh, people watch all kinds of live videos, streaming videos of people just doing random things, working, 
doing Rubik's Cube, just doing all random stuff. So maybe I need to make a uh, little channel where I just sit here and do hats all day. Maybe people enjoy watching the process of listing vintage and collectible baseball hats. Or in Espanol, Goras or Cachuchas. Goras means just hats in general, Cachucha or Cachucha? Cochucha, I should know by now. I ask for them all the time. Means like baseball hat, Cochucha. Tienes Cochuchas? Goras? Donde? Donde Goras? Quanto por todo? How much for all of them? Donde mas? You have more? Tienes uh, uh, plástico, uh, bolsa de plástico, bag of plastic, yeah. Do you have a plastic bag? Good to learn some of that kind of stuff when you're out buying this. I mean, it's good to learn Spanish anyway. But it helps a lot of, uh, well, where I live, a lot of um, Hispanic people that do this. Sometimes I'm, I wanna, the swap, one of the swap meets I go to, I'm like, uh, for my age, I'm probably, I think there's maybe two other guys that I see out there every once in a while that are my age. Otherwise, the only other white people out there are like 80, and uh, everybody else is Hispanic. I like it. I, I'm fine with it. I think it's cool. I get looked at pretty funny sometimes. I know a lot of those people think I'm like a cop or something. I'm white i'm fit i mean i'm not like buff or anything i'm just like thin you know i wear decent clothes i go out there drive a black forerunner and a black chevy truck with a navy blue shell i mean shit um <laughs> but uh, i've gotten to know a bunch of people out there and some of them are super cool some of them are crazy um some of them invite me to stop and have food with them and will always help me Learn Spanish. I'll just point something out. Ah, Como se dice esto? You know, what's this? How do you say this? And some people are super happy to help you out. Stand there for an hour learning Spanish. And some people will get offended that you're trying to speak Spanish or they think that you're like trying to talk down to them or like that because they don't speak English. It's kind of, kind of sticky sometimes, but I've just gotten to the point where I don't give a shit if somebody gets offended because I'm doing a positive thing. I'm trying to learn Spanish so I can speak Spanish to anyone, you know? Yeah. I go to Mexico, speak fluently, you know, just li living here and somebody is speaking Spanish. I've translated a couple times for some people, you know, very small, piquito translation, <laughs> nothing big, but just uh, basic stuff. You get a good reaction from people too. When you speak some Spanish, you go to the taqueria, the caniceria, you order in Spanish, they're like face changes. Um, like you see a look of gratitude, like, oh, whoa, 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 what? Are you? Almost confusion sometimes. Like, are you trying to trick me? Or are you trying to, you know, which I understand. Shit, this used to be Arizona. I mean, ta this used to be Arizona. This used to be Mexico, Arizona, Texas, California. This is all Mexico. I mean, all Mexico, yeah, yeah, this was all Mexico back in the day, and then the Mexican-American War, and all kinds of stuff happened, and uh, next thing you know, we got Texas, California, and Arizona. I think maybe some of New Mexico, too. Maybe that's why it's called New Mexico. Uh, definitely, definitely a lot of Hispanic people live right around where I do, and it's 
people who learn Spanish from people that actually speak it, not from a, you know, a Spanish teacher in like, okay, don't take this personally in Minnesota, but like in Minnesota where there's like, well, there's probably Mexican people there now, but out in like uh, little towns, you know, take Spanish class from your teacher out there, that's not the Spanish you're going to learn from uh, my next door neighbors or from... Uh, People to swap meat, people that you're going to interact with every day, farmers markets, stuff like that. They're going to tell you how to say the real way to say stuff, to communicate, not that, you know. Hola, que pa. Well, and actually, que paso is uh, slang. I don't even think it's a real. Que paso? Que paso just means what's up? What's up? What's up, man? Que paso? Que pasó? Tienes gorras? Si, sí. aquí. Cuánto? How much? All right, I'm, just, I'm, running, out, I'm running out of babel. Good luck.